Hey y'all, it's Miss Flores. So today we are gonna go ahead and start adding fractions that have different denominators, but we're going to use models to help us do this. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's our first question. It says that Hillary is using red fabric to make a tote bag. She uses one piece that is one half yards long. She uses another piece that is one fourth of a yard long. How much red fabric does she use? So we are doing an addition problem. We're modeling the problem one half plus one fourth, right? So this model shows that. We've got our one whole bar. These are called fraction bars. We've got one whole bar right here to use as a reference, kind of to show you is the um, answer going to be less than one or greater than one. And then this is our problem down here. We put one half and one fourth together. And this space down below is where we're going to model our answer down here. Ooh. Pretend that those lines are pretty. We're gonna put our answer down here. So if I'm doing one half plus one fourth, in order to figure out what my answer needs to be in, we can't add fractions with different denominators, right? So we need to find a common denominator. We were learning how to find common denominators last week, right? We find a common denominator, our least common denominator, by listing our multiples of two and four. And we're gonna find the first one they have in common. So we're gonna make a little chart showing our multiples of two and four. So two is gonna be two, four, six, and then four is just gonna be four. Well, what do you know, they both have four, right? So we are going to be using fourths, which are down right here, these are our fourths, and we're gonna be using these fourths tiles to figure out how many fourths fits in this whole spot. So let me take my tiles. So I've got one fourth right there. Let me erase this real quick. All right, so we've got one fourth. You've got to kind of line, got to make sure they're lined up on this edge. You see that, how they're lined up? So that way it helps you, um, you know, make sure that it's equivalent. One fourth, so two fourths fits in our half, and then plus another fourth. And the, what do you know? This one half plus one fourth is equal to one, two, three fourths. So our answer would equal three fourths. Three fourths. So one half plus one fourth is equal to three fourths. And that is how we solve this using models. We basically find our common denominator, find our least common denominator, use that as the pieces in order to figure out what your total is going to be. So let's look at the next one. Oh, need my mouse. Here we are, we've got three fifths plus one half. So just like before, right? If we're adding fifths and a halves, we can't do that. They need to have a common denominator. So let's make our table. We're gonna make our, oops, wrong thing. We're gonna make our table for our multiples of five and our multiples for two. And the one that they have in common first is going to be the denominator for the fraction that we are going to use. So for five, our multiples would be five, 10, 15, 20. Two, we've got two, four, six, eight, 10. So we know 10 is going to be the first one that they have in common. 
So that's what we're going to be using to figure out what's going to fit in here is we're going to be using tenths. We've got our one tenth squares right down here that we're going to use to figure out how many can fit in this whole spot. You notice that we have our one, our one whole bar as reference and our problem one half and three fifths extends that. That means our answer is going to be greater than one whole. So we're going to drag these to fit in this spot. So we got one. And we're just going to put them side by side. Two, three, four, five, six. You got to make sure they're touching side by side, otherwise, you might end up messing up your answer. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. So this equaled eleven tenths. That's an improper fraction, so we want to make sure that we are turning that into a mixed number, right? So we need to pull out our um, pull out as many groups of tens as we can. Well, I can get one group of 10 out of 11, right? So that's going to be one whole. When I take away 10 from 11, I'm left with one tenth. One and one tenth. And you can even see that that one hold stops right here, right? So all of this, this whole group right here is my one hole, my 10 tenths, right? And we had one left over. So that's my one whole and one tenth. Let's look at our next question. We've got a couple more that we're going to do before we look at our assignment. All right, here we've got one half plus three eighths. So we've got one whole for our reference, right? Our one half and then our three eighths. So our first step is to find their common denominator to figure out what pieces are we gonna put down here, right? So we're gonna come up with our list of multiples for two and our list of multiples for eight. Well, two is gonna be two, four, six, eight. I see eight right there, right? Eight is eight's first multiple. So that means that they both have eight in common. So we're going to use eighth, one eighth pieces for our, uh, to fill in our total amount down here. So we're gonna take our one eighth pieces, Fill it in at the edge. We've got one. Let's get that over a little bit. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. seven. So this shows that one half plus one eighth is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths. So our answer is going to be seven eighths. Just like that. So this is adding fractions using models. Our first step is to find the denominator, their common denominator, and that's gonna be the size pieces you are going to use. So when we found our common denominator of two and eight, it was eight, so we used one eighth pieces to figure out how much it would be together. We've got two more that we're gonna do. We've got three fourths plus one third. So uh, you notice when we're showing this, we've got our one hole for reference, right? 
this extends it, which means our answer is definitely going to be greater than one. So let's come up with our denominator. So we're gonna list our multiples for four and our multiples for three. Well, four is gonna be four, eight, 12, 16, and three, we've got three, six, nine, 12. There we go, they both have 12, right? 12 is in my three, my list of threes multiple and my fours. So we're gonna be putting 12th pieces, one 12th pieces, and figuring out how many twelfths is this equal to. So you're gonna take your twelfth piece, drag it over here, make sure they're as close together without really overlapping, and make sure that they are at the edge. So got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oops, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. So we've got 13 twelfths, right? And these fraction models are actually really helpful because they show you equivalent fractions, right? This one fourth piece is equal to one, two, three twelfths. This one third piece is equal to one, two, three, four twelfths, right? All together, all these twelfths are 13 twelfths, right? That's 13. Twelfths, but we want to make sure that our answer is in mixed number form, right? So let's we can use our model for this too. I know that one whole splits off right here. So this whole piece, these twelve twelfths, right? These twelve twelfths are one whole, and then I've got one twelfth left over. So my answer would be one and one twelfth. One and one twelfth. Let's look at our last question. We got a word problem for the last one. So it says Wilhelm is making a pie. He uses one half cup of blueberries and two thirds cups of raspberries. What is the total amount of berries for Wilhelm's pie? All right. So first off, we need to figure out what denominator we're dealing with. Right? We're adding one third. I'm sorry, two thirds plus one half, right? It shows it in our model, two thirds and then, I'm sorry, one half and then two thirds. So we are going to make our list of multiples for two and three. So two is gonna be two, four, six, eight and three is going to be three six what do you know they both have six i don't even have to finish filling out they both have six which means i need to put six one sixth pieces down here and figure out how many pieces that's going to get me and so i'm going to take my one sixth pieces And I'm going to put them underneath here. So it looks like one half is equal to three sixths and one third is equal to two sixths. So 
So you gotta make sure these pieces are very, very, very close together, as close as you can, without overlapping them too much. You know it'll be right because it'll fit within these borders. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sixths. So our answer would be seven sixths. And we can use our model to figure out what that would be as a mixed number, right? We can use our one whole as reference. So our one ends up splitting right there. It stops right there. Six sixths over on this side is one whole. And then my leftover amount, which is this one six is my leftover fraction. So I end up with one and one sixth as my answer. All right. We will take a look at our assignment for the day now. All right, y'all, here is our assignment for today. It follows basically the exact same thing that we were doing in the video lesson. So our first problem, we have Cooper is grading cheese for the family taco dinner. He grades one half cup of cheddar cheese and three fourths cup of Monterey Jack cheese. How much cheese does Cooper grate? So we are adding one half and three fourths, right? We've got our one half plus our three fourths. Well, first off, we need to figure out what our common denominator is, right? For two and four, if I skip count by two, I've got two, four, right? Four is our second multiple. And four is already a multiple of four, right? So that means our answer tiles are going to be in fourths. Your answer tiles are in this box right here. So you're gonna take your tiles, lay them out, just like how I did in the video lesson, right here on this edge until you get to the very end, right? Obviously, this extends past one whole, meaning that our answer is going to be greater than one. Whatever your answer is for this problem, you're gonna type it in in these boxes with your whole number and your numerator and denominator, and that is going to be your final answer. You will not receive credit for this assignment if you do not drag the tiles down below because the whole point of this lesson is modeling these problems. We want to visualize it, right? So your answer does still need to go here, but make sure you're definitely putting your models down below. So if you see the rest of these problems, we've got models, your answer tiles are in the box. These you are dragging and dropping. There are multiple of them. There are more than you need for your answer. So it's not just, you know, the amount that you need, there's more. So make sure that you are using the correct amount. Since this question, our uh, problem was one third plus one sixth, which was less than one, our answer is only just a proper fraction. We don't have a whole number included in our answer. Only questions that have uh, more than one whole have a mixed number as your answer. So there are 10 questions that uh, we are going to model and we will go over these later today let me know in the comments if you have any questions and i will help you out there have a fantastic day guys i'll talk to you later bye